All right, let's get this show started. God, oh God, so many things. So many things. Let me, let me make some bookmarks here real quick. Welcome to Accidental Origin, the weekly writing web show, well, the weekly writing web show, uh, which this week is actually daily and not, not just weekly. Um, I have the week off from work, so I'm going to be writing every day, um, only for about the same amount of time, like two and a half to three hours uh, on here, but uh, yeah, I'm um, going to be doing that for this week. I'm planning on getting as much of the drafting stage of uh, Fear the Siren done as I can. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, and uh, as part of the introduction that I totally ignored, my name is Brendan. Uh, <laughs> I'm a writer. You can visit all my stuff down at accidentalorigin.com, which is, yeah, this way. There we go. Failed. Um, and see what I've been up to, uh, and what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I got my Game Chef reviews back from the game I started designing on stream uh, a couple weeks ago. I uh, got fairly positive feedback. Um, there's definitely something good there. I think the thing that people didn't like the most were the things that I didn't like the most, um, like in the, uh... The combat mechanics and certain things like that. So we're going to be revising that eventually, not right this moment, uh, but within within a few weeks, I think uh, I'll do another stream where I where I talk about some of that stuff. Um, yeah, uh, you can see one thing right here, but I pulled out all my mythology books for the uh, for the stream today. Because uh, we're going to need some reference. Uh, let's move this camera a little bit. And I can, I can show that stuff off. <laughs> so, yeah, perfect. We're going mythology. Ian Hamilton, classic. Bullfinch. Uh, very important mythology. Uh... From the same series, Homer's uh, Homer's Od Iliad and the Odyssey. Uh, these are very nice, leather-bound, like uh, like fake fake gold leaf books. Very very nice. Got them from Costco. <laughs> uh, they sell a few of these classics a year, and they're always great. Uh, so this is from the same series, uh, and then because I keep everything from forever. I have a couple of Osborne and Scholastic Greek uh, mythology books here. Uh, this one's uh, world mythology, so it's got a lot of different cultures. This one's Greek and Norse, uh, with a few references to Roman, because Roman's a little bit derivative. Uh, not entirely 100% across the board, but there's, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of overlap, a lot of overlap, uh, and I'm trying out a new audio setup today. I've uh, moved around to some things, uh, and I think it's better. Uh, I feel like there's a lot less fan noise and certain things like that, uh, but you know, keep me apprised. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. Uh, if you were here yesterday, I did. Today's my birthday. Yay! Happy birthday to me! Uh, today's my birthday, so uh, I did a birthday stream yesterday so that I could just draft all week and not interrupt it. Um, so a couple of my good friends came and hung out with me. I see you there, Pepe, MC Pepper Pockets. Thanks for hanging out with me yesterday. I totally forgot you were off today. 
Um, but that makes sense. We have the same days off, so, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't think there's much else new with me. Um, I'm planning on finishing a short story. Uh, another, like, an off-stream short story by the end of the month. Uh, I really want to get it done so I can start working on a new project. I found this awesome call for submissions uh, for a superhero anthology from uh, the science fiction writers of, of science fiction and fantasy writers of America. Uh, looks super cool. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to I'd like to work on something for that. Um, other than that, I think I think that's everything. So I'm gonna kind of jump right in. Jump right in. Uh, okay. So my plan, uh, it's a little hard to see, but I can't actually make it bigger, so there's not much I can do about it. Uh, my plan is for this story to be at least... Why, why is your house shaking? Is it me? No, it's the construction blasting, okay. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> there, there's no way it's me. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm planning on making this at least 5,000 words. Uh, between three and 8,000 tends to be a fairly regular short story. Um, sometimes it's three and 8,000 or, or sorry, three and 7,000 or four and 7,000. So we're some, somewhere around there. We're aiming for about half. Um, and I'm planning on doing in, I calculated it out and it ended up being 833 words a day over six days. Uh, so I'm planning on doing about 800, uh, which you can see by my session target down there. Um, which basically means that I'm sort of planning each scene to be about 800 words. And then we'll, we'll kind of work our way off of that and see what, uh, see what that gives us. I am not planning on doing any editing today. Uh, so I'm going to try my best and only write new words and not old words um, in the effort of getting as much done this week as I can. Um, but feel free to give me feedback. Um, I will definitely take a look at anything uh, you guys have to say. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're going to start with this. Starting with a fight scene. Um, so there is one thing I wanted to look at real quick that I didn't get a chance to yet. I didn't check M Bullfinch for the sirens, but I want to do that. Yeah, they keep referencing the Odyssey uh, for descriptions of the sirens. Uh, hello, uh, Adilis. Is that how you pronounce that? Am I completely off? Here we go. Wow. I can't believe I never looked at this before. That's so cool. Uh, apparently, Ed Ellis. Oh, okay, cool. Um, apparently, Bullfinch's mythology has the age of chivalry And the, the uh, I, I can never pronounce this right, but the uh, Mabinagion, or whatever that's called, the uh, the crazy British epic. Some good, that's some good stuff. Beowulf, Robin Hood, Charlemagne. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. Uh, 
so I want um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, I don't see it I don't see it in here that's really a bit too bad Charlemagne, give uh, give the chat a brief overview of Charlemagne, Sam. Put that history degree to work. Ah, one eighty. Described as sea nymphs. sea nymphs, but I'll read this section to you because it's interesting. Circe aided their departure and instructed them how to pass safely by the coast of the Sir sirens. The sirens were sea nymphs who had the power of charming by their song all who heard them so that the unhappy mariners were irresistibly impelled to cast themselves into the sea to their destruction. Seriously directed Ulysses to, f to fill the ears of his seamen with wax, so that they, could, they should not hear the strain, and to cause himself to be bound to the mast, and his people to be strictly enjoyed whatever he might say or do, by no means release him until they should have passed the Siren's Island. Ulysses obeyed these directions. He filled the ears of his people with wax and suffered them to bind him with cords firmly to the mast. As they approached the Siren's Island, the sea was calm, and over the waters came the notes of music so ravishing and attractive that Ulysses struggled to get loose, and by cries and signs to his people begged to be released. But they, obedient to his previous orders, sprang forward and bound him still faster. They held on their course, and the music grew fainter until it ceased to be heard, when with joy Ulysses gave his companions a signal to unseal the ears, and they relieved him from his bonds. <laughs> yeah, question. You should be doing art things. You should be doing art things. Let's tear up another little bookmark here for this session. Uh, I am writing a classical fantasy short story, uh, kind of based on Greek mythology, uh, that I designed, uh, from a series of art prompts as a challenge from my friend Ronnie. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research, uh, into, uh, myths, uh, Persephone, uh, sirens, uh, Greek demons, uh, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Should have. Printed. This. Yeah, man. It's gonna be good. That was weird. Oh, I see what happened. Okay. No, not that. This. Yes. 
Uh, have I written other things? Yes. Uh, I started writing when I was 12, uh, publishing fan fiction. Uh, I did that for a little bit. Uh, I have been published in a bunch of student newspapers uh, across Canada. I'm Canadian. Uh, I studied uh, English and screenwriting in college, uh, though I didn't graduate, but that's what I studied. Um, and yeah, so I've worked on quite a bit of things. Uh, I don't have a lot of published stuff that's really available. I'm working on that. Um, kind of one of the things that I've been approaching this stream is, uh, I'm not a professional. I don't make my living writing. Uh, I want to. Uh, 100%. Uh, and I'm going to keep working on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm working towards that. So I'm working on this short story. I'm working on uh, a couple other things off stream. Uh, I'm planning on submitting to uh, some publishers and stuff soonish um, within the next month or so. Uh, start getting my work out there. I'm ready. <laughs> It took me a while. I had a lot of stuff with school that that I, I had to, how to describe this best. Um, when I was in college, I was diagnosed with ADHD and I had a lot of anxiety issues because of school. So uh, when I left, I had to do a lot of work on myself uh, in order to, to become the writer that I want, wanted to. I, I couldn't, I was too far away. Uh, I had too much anxiety. Quitting quitting school was one of the uh, one of the best decisions I ever made, uh, and that sounds weird. I certainly value education a lot, but for my health and my sanity, it had to be done. And I'm okay with that. I've made my peace. If I was in, if I wanted to be in a field that uh, I needed a degree, I probably would have would have pushed a lot harder. Uh, but writer, but being a writer, much like being an artist or anything like that, um, talent and like skill, skill and talent and perseverance are much more important than a piece of paper. Uh, and you can keep working on those things outside of school. But you know. That I will never recommend to anyone uh, to quit school unless there is a very good reason. Um, education is important. All right, so let's start this. Feel free, um, feel free to stop me and ask questions. Um, I'm trying to be more open because uh, I, I can definitely come across as very uh, like driven and focused and, and people don't like to disturb that. But feel free, ask questions. Um, so uh, the overall plot is that uh, a, uh, a mercenary has been hired to assassinate a siren, uh, but ends up getting convinced by the siren 
uh, to stop that group from uh, completing a demon summoning ritual. Yeah. School is for nerds. I'm a nerd. I'm totally a nerd. It's fine. I like it that way. One hidden in the valley. Also, is the keyboard too loud? Um, I have a loud keyboard. And with the new mic positioning and all that, I wasn't sure if it would be okay. I was able to turn, because of the new positioning, I was able to turn the gain down a lot, and I think that really helped uh, with it not being crazy. Uh, what was I thinking? Um, You want to write lyrics? I am awful at lyrics and poetry. Um, but I respect the hell out of people who can do it. Um, I just, I don't think in that way. <laughs> uh, I'm a premise guy, uh, more so than a character guy or a, or a language guy. Um, yeah. I, I like it. Don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy poetry. Um, big fan of T.S. Eliot, uh, some of the Irish poets. Um, yeah, but no, <laughs> I'm I'm so bad at it. Uh, it it's not it's not good. <laughs> Let me ask you a question then, Ed, uh, since, since you've been asking me a lot of questions, which is awesome. Um, if you're a poet, what do you watch on Twitch and why? Are you, uh, are you a gamer who's kind of stumbled into creative, or are you someone who's always been into uh, or are you someone who's always been into, uh, just been into creative and it's kind of branching out? Or am I completely off on all of that? I don't understand your question, Sam. 
Okay. Because I also started in gaming many, many years ago. Uh, and one day I discovered Jonah Loeb, uh, the 3D artist himself. And that's when it kind of all started to change a little bit. Um, yeah, I tend to watch both as well. It depends on the day. I watch more creative than, than gaming. Uh, because I usually watch while I'm working and I prefer having creative streams up. Um, but I do watch uh, a lot of stuff. You think? You think, Sam? I'm gonna pull up some here then. Let's we'll see if maybe this will help. Um, so for those of you unfamiliar, um, hmm, interesting. Uh, I use primarily uh, Scrivener, which is an awesome writing software. Uh, the other software I just pulled up there is Hemingway, uh, which is a uh, readability software. It, uh, it uses its algorithm to uh, go through your text and identify identify what, what's hard to read, uh, passive voice, uh, difficult words, adverbs, that kind of thing. Uh, I love it a lot. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I also wish I could illustrate Ed, I do. I've taken some drawing classes and stuff, but uh, I'm, I've not spent enough time to really get good at it. Oh, I see what you mean, Sam. So I should probably just rearrange this, right? Uh... Well, Photoshop is, is the primary illustration tool. Uh, it's not the only one. Uh, it's kind of expensive. Uh, the other ones that I know of are Paint Tool Sci, which tends to be a lot cheaper, and Krita, uh, which is very much uh, up and coming, open source, but is uh, rapidly gaining followers in the illustration community. Yeah, I mean, 3D, model 3D modeling is kind of weird. Uh, it's, a, it's a skill unto itself. It has a lot to do with illustration. There's a lot of crossover, but at the same time, it's, it's very different. Uh, working in a 3D space like that. Here's the forest right? Should Cyber be capitalized? Probably not. Hmm. Yeah, Crudo is free. Um, I'll, I can pull that up for you if you want. That's not a problem.
That's Krita. Put that in the chat there for you. Um, I have not used it, uh, and I probably won't, uh, because I bought Creative Cloud as part of uh, as part of doing streaming because I I need to uh, I need I needed Premiere and uh, I actually kind of needed uh, Adobe Acrobat, uh, so it it made sense to to just kind of get the whole package. Um, and just premier was like 25 bucks a month and the whole package is like 40, 40 bucks a month. So, you know, it made sense. Um, you can use a mouse and keyboard. Most people don't. Uh, a lot of people use one of these guys. This is uh, an Intuos uh, Pro medium medium size it's a drawing tablet uh, a lot of people use these a lot of people use uh, the real professionals use Cintiqs um, but not everyone does uh, if you hang out in enough art streams you'll see that uh, there's quite a few people who actually don't like using Cintiqs I prefer using uh, these kind of, of tablets um, and Wacom makes a bunch of really cheap ones that are good uh, that do really well um, for beginners uh, so you don't have to invest a lot of money uh, hey button what's up Huon, Huion, I, I forget how to pronounce it, uh, is a type of graphics tablet. Uh, they tend to be cheaper. Some people like them, some people don't. Uh, Wacom is kind of the, like the leading name. Um, it, I, I, only, I only bought one because uh, it's what they carried in, it's what they carry in most stores. Uh, rather than buying one online. If you're buying one online, you can get a, a way on. Yeah, I've, I've heard that question, and you would know better than I would uh, about that kind of stuff for sure. Um, yeah, for, for those kinds of ones. Uh, I was thinking more of... Uh, uh, where are they? Yeah, these guys. Like the Intuos Draw and Intuos Art and all that, these are like cheap. Like they're like 50 bucks. Something like that. Ooh. 100 bucks? Is that 80 bucks? They're more expensive than they used to be. I think they're probably better though. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not an expert in that stuff. Uh, you can uh, feel free to ask questions though. You should answer. And if Drani is now here, she also knows quite a bit about that stuff more than I would, uh, for sure. They're they're actually art people, unlike me. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's all good, Drani. It's all good.
Yeah. That sentence is wrong, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Fix it later. Try to just get as much of my thoughts down on a page as possible right now. Uh, I tend to be more of uh, an editing type. So uh, I start in kind of small blocks and expand on them. Uh, so I'll start with a sentence and then I'll make it two sentences and then I'll make it four sentences. Uh, and that works really well uh, for me, uh, though it can get a little bogged down <laughs> sometimes. Um, today, well, this week, I'm trying not to do that as much as possible. I want to just get all the drafting, like just put all of the words down. And uh, I will, so that, so that at the end of the week, I basically have a first draft. And then I'll do more of a standard editing process uh, on stream for that kind of stuff. Um, maybe with the next one, uh, I haven't quite decided what's going on with all that, but maybe with the next one I'll do more my process just to illustrate the difference. But I wanted to be a little more standard uh, this time around. A, to challenge myself and, and B, just so people don't start developing weird habits as much. Though, you know, process, process uh, is an individual thing. Uh, and feel free to let me know if you prefer if I externalized uh, my writing as much as possible. Uh, I can do that. Uh, I'm not thinking about it too much right now, but I can definitely do that. Because uh, I tend to think in full sentences or phrases anyway, uh, so that's fine. Uh, I believe BobaBot is broken. Uh, so, you know. That's what they were telling me yesterday. few things here. Um, 
So in the grand scheme, uh, the scene that I'm currently writing is going to be the first scene of the story. Ah, uh, thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. I feel like a slacker. <laughs> but, you know. Kind of weirded out by the transition from him watching to him acting. Uh, trying to think through it. Research is important. You should do research. Even if you're writing a fantasy or science fiction, you should always do research. Hmm. Interesting. easy to find information on the Odyssey and all that. It's harder to find the stuff I'm looking at with like Cadmus and uh, the Stranger stuff. Reading about the the Spartoi. They're not referred to by name in uh, in the couple of things I have open here.
Mm. Interesting. Yeah, uh, I pulled out all my mythology books for today, Drowny. I can I can show you here. You know, to have uh, to have reference. Greek designs influenced a lot of things, and there's always a resurgence of it. Well, to be honest, it's more Roman design than Greek design, but there is some Greek design stuff so that's part of that. Greek and Roman distinctions get really annoying. Because <laughs> um, the, the Romans were big uh, adopters of stuff. Stealing from whoever they could. Uh, what named Ronnie? Hyperanoir. Hyperanoir. There's the phone. There's the phony. <laughs> like, uh, like Pepper Pocket said, these, uh, you know. Jim Rayner, he's hype. Oh. <laughs> That's super random. Uh, yeah. It's all regular stuff. Doesn't now? I well, I didn't make up the names. I just took one of the five Spartoi. 
Who lived? Really, no Cadmus? I'm so confused. Maybe. Hmm. It's really odd. Do they have Pentheus then? Is he in it? Is he not there either? people in here? I'm so confused. Why would they not be in here? Well, that's odd. Oh, Greek people. That's really odd. Huh. So I need to go into Greek people? Yes, found them. Yeah, Europa is a person. Oh, yeah. This, uh... Yeah. This, uh... This got weird real quick. Hello. don't usually stream during the week. Uh, I tend to only stream on Sundays because I work. Uh, but I'm off this week. So, um, and I was getting to drafting on the short story I started on stream. Uh, kind of building it up step by step. 
so I decided that I was going to draft all week. So I will be on uh, every day this week from 12 p.m. Eastern to 3 p.m. Uh, doing doing this story. I have six scenes in six days. So um, it's a classical fantasy with a foundation in Greek mythology based on a series of art prompts uh, that I generated as a challenge from Jironi. Uh And it's one o'clock. So I'm going to take a five minute break, fill up my water bottle. Uh, I will be back.
Okay, I'm back. All right. Yeah, I don't really hang out with writers online. I mostly hang out with artists. <laughs> Should be a comma. They're a lot more similar than they seem. I've been trying to create my thesis of creative fields being the same. Um, some interesting stuff there, for sure. <laughs> Technically, yes. Uh, uh, nope. Um, depends what you mean by new. Um, I started writing when I was 12 years old, uh, publishing fan fiction online, uh, which I did for about a year. Uh, and then uh, I did a bunch of writing courses and stuff. Uh, but when I got to college, I uh, ended up working for the community newspaper. It's like the school paper, but it's also kind of the, it was the community paper. Uh, and it was, was actually one of the, uh, one of the highest rate, uh, was an award winning, uh, like rated one of the best, uh, student newspapers in North America. So I've been published in there uh, a ton of times. Uh, I think I wrote almost 20 or 30 articles for them in two years, something like that, which is pretty good for a paper like that. Uh, not as good for a professional journalist. Uh, but let me see, I think I have it here. So 11 in the first year and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the second year. So yeah, pretty close to 20, 19, I guess. Uh, and because of that, um, we were part of some journalist collectives. Uh, so there's a couple articles I wrote that got picked up uh, across the country. Um, as for fiction, uh, no, I've never been published in fiction. Uh, I'm going to change that uh, within the next next little while. Uh, I studied uh, screenwriting though uh, in college, and. Uh, have done quite a bit with that as well.
but I've I've started I've started paying my dues as it were. Uh, over the last year year and a half, I've submitted samples to approximately seven seven companies or so. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't gotten much, but, you know, done some interviews, done some stuff. Oh, nice. All of something, all of something on the back burner, right? I've seen a couple of screenwriting streams. I've had some people stop by and talk about them. I'm into it. I haven't really watched any writing streams on here, to be honest. Yeah, it's more that uh, most of the time I'm online uh, is not times that there are any people writing because the community is small. Uh, and the one or two days I have open uh, are I hang out with my art friends who <laughs> uh, stream. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> It's a little weird. I'm gonna try and be better about it, uh, especially this week because I'm off. So I'm gonna, gonna try and check some more out, learn some things, take some tips. Fair enough, fair enough. I have thoughts. I have thoughts, and they're confused.
Okay. Yes, Johnny, I told you. I write in a very readable way. <laughs> I am not crazy uh, complicated with my word choices. Um, I probably should be a little bit better, um, but I'm gonna pop this in a Hemingway just to show you. So see, see that readability right there? Grade four. <laughs> I, think, I think you could read that. Yeah, but that's, that's the point. Um, so I don't know how many people here know er Ernest Hemingway, but I'm a f big fan of Ermit, er, not Ermit, Ernest, Ernest Hemingway. Um, so you see here, this software is called Hemingway Editor. Um, it was developed by two brothers. Uh, I really like it about readability. And Hemingway is one of the most important writers in, uh, in English canon. Uh, especially American writers. He's one of the most important American writers. He wrote like The Old Man in the Sea and uh, For Whom the Bells Toll and, and a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, very naturalistic writing. Anyway, uh, there was the thing. Was it in here or was it on their website? Yeah. So Ernest Hemingway, who's considered one of the greatest writers, at least of the 20th century, yeah, I, I, I can concede that point, American canon. Uh, I really like him. <laughs> so, you know, you can see where, where I kind of lie on that. But yeah, he's one of, the, one of the most important writers of the 20th century, along with uh, English writers anyway. Uh, and his work scores as low as fifth grade. Uh He's known for his complexity. Uh, the way his style is very, very adult, but it reads easily. <laughs> um, do you not uh, do you not like Hemingway, Willow? Which I can understand. I can understand why people don't like him, but I do. I do like. I do like Hemingway. So yeah, um, I used to be a very uh, complex writer, lots of sentences uh, with dueling phrases and many commas and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was too confusing. It was too dense. It was too confusing. Uh, so in a lot of ways, I started influencing my style with the journalism I was doing. I write for clarity. I, like, I write to tell a story, I write for clarity. Uh, I also do a lot of scripting. Uh, and having a style that's very clear like that. Uh, having a style that's very clear like that helps uh, in things like scripts. Where you don't have a ton of words um, to, to describe every little thing. You can call me Cosmic Drone, it's fine. They'll, they'll get the idea. <laughs> and, and I agree with you. I mean, there are, there are problems with Hemingway. 
<laughs> his anti-war stance is, is crazy uh, and stuff, but, you know, I still, I like his style. I like the way he tells a story. Um, I don't think Old Man in the Sea is his best work, though most people consider it to be. Greek house look like? side here depends on the island that's probably fair i don't need a specific like island or anything like that i was just uh curious as to a general size and layout uh it's not going to be super important i just didn't want because i had an image of a modern house and i realized that was wrong Why, why does every time someone looks up architecture, you just get Minecraft? <laughs> Santorini. I'm assuming that's a place. Cool looking. Very blue. Very, very blue. Yeah, yeah, Johnny. We know all about your Minecraft obsession. I'm curious as to why all these pictures are of that same tower. Interesting. Post bagging churches? Cool. Good to know. Yeah. probably gonna go for something more like this <laughs> I think it's uh, better describes what I'm trying to do yeah yeah
Oh, that reminds me, Jordan. I need to add that to my to-do list. Uh, uploads. to do this and they left a message awesome
something was wrong here. Uh, something was wrong. That's better. So I had some stuff in my to-do list for uh, after the stream. Uh, I got some stuff, uh, stream stuff to, to work on. Yeah, I totally do that. Oh, one second. I totally do do that, Drowny. <laughs> uh, I also like hit space and backspace a lot. Because uh, I don't like having extra symbols, but I really like having. Um, yeah, I don't like having extra symbols, so I always start a new line. Uh, with a space, <laughs> but it gets weird because I'll I'll go back and forth while I'm waiting, and it's supposed to show my formatting symbols. Why is it not doing that? I don't know. I don't know why it's not showing them. It's really weird. It was working. Is there something I did? Yeah, I moved it for today, so it's kind of getting in the way, but you don't need it today, because I'm, oh, here we go, there we go, that's better, that's much better, I feel better.
There's uh, so many choices, so little time. It's a guitar shirt. Mm. Mm. Oh, please. <laughs> it's only fun to do live when I have inspiration. I said I would get to you after the stream, Johnny. If you're not inspired by what I'm doing, then it has to wait till after. my Greek house here.
Uh, it's getting warmer, but it's not too bad at the moment. Um, we usually have pretty cool mornings. I guess like the afternoon is what gets real bad. Last night question or this morning? How much time have you spent on a question? I think he's ahead. Whoa. Okay, I didn't think he was that far ahead. <laughs> That's like Australia time. That sounds like Australia time. I knew you were not in North America, but I couldn't remember exactly where. If you if you made an hour and a half, I think I think you're good. much as the beer or whatever uh it's very possible that it's just i i find well at least for me i find like after 2 a.m i'm basically useless for anything other than watching movies <laughs> um i wouldn't call it pathetic I've I've heard worse. Like you ever hear Quentin Tarantino try to do an Australian accent? Not not good. Well, 
Well, Johnny knows all about that with her Eastern Standard Time sleep cycle despite living in Germany. job things. Well, you know. Oh yeah? Uh, PM it to me. I want to take a look. Or I can give you a permit, I guess, but it's up to you. Yeah, okay. Sure, no problem. I'd like to take a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. No worries. If that's cool. If it's not cool, don't bother. But just, you know. I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no. When I said PM, I, like I would, uh, I'd look at it later. I I won't look at it now. That's no no problem. I got you. Okay. Copy that. Throw it in a browser way over here, and I'll come back to that. Cool, man. <laughs> Good try, Sir Rabbit. Good try. No problem. I'll, I'll take a look after the stream. Um, are you in Derek's channel, uh, Discord? Or are you in my Discord? Or either? <laughs> because I'll send you a message later with that. Okay, cool. I will send you, um, I'll send you a, a message later with my comments because you'll be asleep, but I will do that.
making a reminder here. Because I will see you in my DMs then. Perfect. Ask Johnny about my drawing drawing skills. Uh, I'd like to be able to illustrate uh, a comic one day, uh, but that's in the far future. I do not spend nearly enough time practicing in order to be that good. Uh, and I'm only really good at backgrounds <laughs> and perspective and stuff. Uh, I'm not much of a character illustrator. It's really nice because it's my birthday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, gang. I appreciate that. Nice, Johnny. It's so beautiful. All right. I am also gonna be, be right back. I'm gonna take another uh, four or five minute break. 
uh, and do one more hour. I'm going to finish up around 3 o'clock. I'm making RA progress. Um, I'm about a third of the way uh, from where I want to be. Well, I'm at 300 out of 800, so three eighths. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't expect I'm actually going to hit that today, but that's fine. I'm just getting warmed up, getting back in the drafting mood. It's been a while since I first started a story or a scene. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Five minute break. I'll see y'all in a bit.
Damn, I missed the drop. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> it's a party snake, Sam. Hashtag party snake. It's okay. I'll change it back <laughs> later. Thinking a thing. I'm thinking a thing, and there's a thing that I'm thinking. Maybe, Johnny? Maybe. <laughs> well, there's certainly worse payments. Certainly worse payments. <sighs> okay.
Huh? Oh. Yeah. Me too, Wordwin. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a while. Just keeps everything so organized. There's a couple of things I wish I could do with it that it doesn't do, but overall, quite good. Cause I don't know about you, but I, I kind of wish I had better image processing so that I could use images and things. Uh, and I also wish that uh, I could pop out frames. So I could do kind of what Photoshop does and have different frames in different spots, uh, depending on the situation. I would like that. But overall, still, still vastly superior to just like a Google Doc or Microsoft Word. That being said, well, this, this isn't super expensive software, but just Notepad. I write stuff in Notepad all the time. Right, but with the pop-out windows, you'd, you'd be able to have that more freedom. Um. <laughs> uh, that, is, that is very true. Uh, a Google Doc integration would be awesome. Or, or barring that, uh, 
it'd be really awesome if they had a uh, an Android app that would allow you to access it uh, on the go. Well, that's true about the OBS. That being said, uh, I just do a display capture. I don't do a window capture. So for that'd be fairly easy for me. I have two monitors though, so it's easy. <laughs> if you don't, it becomes more of a problem. Uh, right, I'm not capitalizing this. Right. I have three. I have three what? I don't have three monitors, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> I only have two. I would like to get three monitors, but I don't have three. <laughs> huh. I did not know that. But yeah, I know what you mean. Well, I mean, I have one 24 inch monitor and one 31 inch monitor. So it's, yeah, like, and the 31 inch is 4K. So it's basically like having three monitors, but not quite. <laughs> but not quite. Harsh, harsh, Ronnie. Hello. Uh, I'm going to be changing the description a little bit. Uh, I'm moving a lot away from the uh, from the educational aspect. Not that I don't want the stream to be educational, but just that uh, it's not going to be as lesson based uh, as before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, slight update. Slight update. All right, question. Ask away, man. Well, that's a, uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I know what you're saying, uh, Aventua, is that how you say it? Um, and, and this week's a weird week. I don't usually stream during the week. Uh, I stream on Sundays. But uh, I have the week off, 
and I'm at the right stage, so I'm going to be drafting every day this week, uh, just for funsies, and to, to kind of talk to other people. Uh, and I also want to show uh, the entire process of writing this story on stream. I do not work on it off stream at all, uh, other than thinking about it, of course, but I, I don't actually do any work. Um, so rather than having it take like four or five months, doing a week of drafting will really speed that up. <laughs> Get me a, a solid first draft quickly. Um, as for your question, question. Uh, that's a very big, uh, the answer to that is very big. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much, uh, pretty much what Wordwin said. Uh, you want to establish what kind of world you're building. Uh, what are the rules of the world you're building? Uh, you want to note characters who these characters are, how they fit in the world, how they relate to each other, if they relate to each other, they don't have to. Uh, you want to establish how uh, mechanics work. So you, you want to establish how physics works, how magic works. Uh, and it's okay if you have neither of those things, but just you want an internal consistency. So you need to be aware of what's going on. Uh, you can make it up as you go along. That's not a huge issue. The one thing I will say about that is, uh, and I'm bad for not doing it, I should probably do it more. But if you're working on kind of a longer, um, if you're working on kind of a longer story arc, uh, like it's not so bad with short stories, it's, it's pretty easy to keep consistent. But you want to note every time you've, you've written down a detail about a character. So if you've described their clothing, or if you've described uh, a certain aspect of their personality, you should be writing it down uh, in a notebook so that you can reference that later on if you need to. Uh, so if you say they're from Missouri or whatever, just a random example, uh, you don't want to, three chapters later, say they're from Idaho. Unless those are in the same state. I know, I'm not American. <laughs> but that's the gist, is you want internal consistency. Yep. And Johnny is also correct. Uh, putting it down on the page is not as permanent as people make it think, or as people think. You have the opportunity to change it as many times as you want. Um, exactly like drawing, you know, you can you can paint back over it. Not a problem. And the interesting thing I've found, maybe Wordwin or uh, Sam can back me up with this, but uh, committing it to paper, at least for me, helps me get my thoughts in order. So I'm a big thinking guy, I'm a big brainstorming guy of creativity, but until I put it down on the page, it doesn't make real sense. I need that physical process in order to, to get it all working. Um, I don't know if other people are like that. Uh, but I, I definitely am. But yeah, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Uh, eternal, internal consistency. <laughs> and and that's fair, Aventua. That can definitely be a problem. Uh, the one thing I will note is that now that you've had this crazy world built, you can always do the rest later. Um, like you can come back to it, but I understand what you mean. It, it sucks to do that much work and then have nothing come of it.
yeah, exactly what I was what I was saying, Sam. That you you by writing it down, it when you write it down because the the way language works, it has to make sense in some way. And uh, not writing it down, it's just going to be this incoherent mass forever. <laughs> That being said, do what works for you. Not every writer uh, writes every little bit down. Not every writer has the same process. Uh, people who are, uh, yeah, no problem, Wardwin. I will get you a permit. Can I do it from here? Yes, excellent. Yeah, man. Have a notebook, it, like if, if it's something that you're going to be working on for a while, just have one notebook for that specific story. Don't write anything else in it, but just, you know, keep it around when you, when you come up with stuff. Um, and you can pick and choose what works or what doesn't later. Yeah, uh, this is very similar to a lot of the ones that I've seen. I'm not great at doing character portraits. Um, interesting. I've never played Fate. I am aware of it and what it does. Um, I think RPGs are a great way to look at characters uh, and what characters can do and can't do. Uh, and as someone who does a little bit of RPG design and I've done some on stream and stuff, uh, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the same issue about it being concrete. The way I try and look at it, and again, you probably, really, never done an original piece. I'm surprised by that. But the idea that I have is that um, well, so here's the thing question is there's no end to you getting better. There's no moment that states like, okay, I'm ready. I've reached the level. You're always going to see something that you want to improve. And that's going to happen for your entire life. If you're a good artist and, and are constantly challenging yourself. Um, so you... And I know Derek's talked about this a lot too. Uh, you you gotta you gotta just let go and put it on the page. And if it sucks, it sucks. Deal. <laughs> uh, I mean, what I'm writing here is not great. It's okay. I think it's okay. I think it's gonna need a lot of tuning. But that's that's what a first draft's for. It's to give me something to tune. Give me something to make better to polish into something. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of writing in work, uh, in notepad lately, uh, when I don't want to write in Scrivener for like silly random things for like my friends online and stuff. Uh, and also at work, uh, if I get a chance, cause I don't have access to a full computer setup, but, uh, yeah, it's all good. I definitely agree with that, uh, Aventua. Uh, I come from a script writing background of sorts. Uh, I mean, I started in just general fiction, but uh, I come from a script writing background. And the less characters you have means the less actors you pay. And the less actors you pay means the more likely your script is going to get produced. <laughs> um, so less characters is better. That being said, uh, I think it depends. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, sometimes reusing an old character works, but you shouldn't just reuse an old character to reuse an old character. Yeah. Uh, especially um, 
the the actor thing is especially true of plays. Uh, it is very unlikely that you will get something with more than four characters produced as a play nowadays. Other than maybe at like a big theater like the NAC or uh, something like that. Um, But yeah, like it's impossible. Uh, like one, one or two man plays are like what most of the theater community, at least in Canada right now, is doing, because uh, it's, it's, it's all that they can afford. <laughs> that being said, there, there's some really good one and two man plays, like fantastic ones. I've seen quite a few. Uh, but yeah. I hope that helped, man. I hope that helped. <laughs> and and like I said, like it that's a that's a very general rule. Um <laughs> that's a very general rule. It depends on your script. If, if every character that you have in there is important, then then that's fine. It can still happen. There are plenty of good, um, good ensemble films. <laughs> I mean, Quentin Tarantino, right? Quentin Tarantino does that kind of thing all the time. You know, eight, nine main characters who play back and forth. The Hateful Eight. That's actually like ten, I think, uh, in total. Something like that. You know, it, it just depends. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, it's not, a, yeah, it's not a hard, hard or fast rule is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. It's not like if you have more than a certain number of characters, uh, it's not going to be produced. It's just from a business perspective... Uh, the less money that you have to pay out in casting is more money that you can spend on production or just less money you can spend in general. <laughs> yeah. That switch is hard too. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds fine. Uh, Tua, I don't know. What's your nickname? What do people call you? <laughs> uh, that does not seem like a ton of characters to me. But I guess it depends. It depends on how much, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to use film terms again, how much screen time they take up. Yeah, question. That sounds awesome, man. And uh, I recommend, I mean, even if you're not going to do a comic straight off the bat, that you should do some, like, panel studies or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's how I was pronouncing it, right? But... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I kind of figured that's what you meant. But yeah, I'm uh, notoriously bad at pronunciation. It's fine.
I can see that. I, I think me and Sam have similar builds and similar voices, so that's fair. Ten foot wingspan is really big, right? Oh, okay. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I plan a lot uh, because I've found uh, over the years that I've worked on. Uh, I found, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I found that uh, over the years that if I don't plan, I I uh, I lose track halfway through and can't continue. Um, like I I need to have a beginning and an ending. I don't necessarily have to have every single middle part worked out, but I need to have kind of like act one, act three, uh, or I, I can't work on it. Like I just, I can't, it's too hard. <laughs> I get, I get confused. I get weirdly blocked. And I mean, writer's block is totally just a lack of planning in my opinion, <laughs> um, at least for me. So I try not to do that as much as possible and have at least somewhat of an outline. Uh, that being said, I use very basic outlines. I don't like detail out every single, every single little bit. I allow for some freedom, but I like knowing kind of what scenes I'm doing and why. Um, question, uh, by panel studies, by do I mean dissecting panels? I do not. Uh, I mean, uh, that it would be cool to do some like almost like film stills of scenes within your comic, uh, like as single illustrations, just to see what they would look like to get a feel for, uh, how, how things look, how things, uh, you, how you're, how you're putting your imagination on the page. Yeah. Uh, Eventua. Uh, Sid Field, whose book I've been reading lately, uh, talks a lot about that, where the beginning and the ending are the most important parts of a story. And I kind of agree with that, but it's more for me that I need a direction. If I don't have a direction, then I'm just going to wander aimlessly and it's not going to be any good. It's magic, Johnny. It's magic. Also, her bones are probably hollow. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm not an artist by any means, and uh, I quite recommend that you check out uh, Stevie Ray Drawn's channel, uh, which I will... I have a thing now. Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, that should be correct. I hope that's correct. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, yeah, go hit up Stevie Ray Drawn's channel. Um, she draw illust She's doing illustrations of her comic on stream at times, and she knows a lot more about that stuff than I do. Um, yep, yeah, she's an Adobe streamer. Uh, and one of my friends, uh, she's kind of awesome. <laughs> she's also a writer, which is really cool. Yeah, exactly, Word. 
Um, that's exactly my problem, too. Uh, I find the things that I plan are just higher quality. They're more structured. They're better. Um, that being said, it depends. It depends on the story. Uh, I, I tend to adapt my, my process on the fly, depending on what I'm doing and how many, how many concrete ideas I have in, in any given moment. Um, okay, I'll try and get at least 500 words done. I got 20 minutes left. Aim for over half. Yeah, I want her to be really big. I want her to be like seven foot tall sort of thing. And I think wingspan, you basically double. Does that make sense? Is that wrong? You you double the wingspan compared to the height? Or am I completely wrong? Or does it depend on the type of bird? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. So the, uh, the record for birds is a wandering albatross measured at 3.63 meters, 11 foot 11 inches. feet uh, interesting all right okay we'll say 15 feet I'm I'm basically just gonna double her double her height ish <laughs> you say yes I do say <laughs> that's that's pretty funny hungry 15 more minutes
Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I was saying before. Internal consistency. Same with science. Same with magic. Same with anything. Internal consistency. People will be very... People will be much more forgiving of... Uh, much more forgiving and much easier... Uh, will suspend their dis disbelief much easier if it's consistent. They will accept it more. Um, that's totally a thing. I'm not good at fight scenes. <laughs> I definitely need to improve on my fight scenes. That's amazing, Ronnie. Uh, I'm screen capping that. <laughs> uh, so good. <laughs> yep, that's that's basically how it works. The one thing that uh this is a weird pet peeve of mine, but the thing that really annoys me is I hate it when people type on film cuz it never looks real and it's one of the easiest things that they can make look real. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't get it. I don't know. I don't get how they can make look, uh, they can make painting look real, like spend all this time to make painting look real, but they, they can't make typing look real. Oh, and the other thing that really annoys me is, um, I hate it when they use empty coffee cups. I hate it. Uh, both, Aventua. Both. Uh, both of them annoy me. <laughs> because they're both, both equally fake. Uh, but yeah, I also hate it when people use, when they use empty coffee cups. Because no matter how good an actor they are, they can't make it seem like it has weight. 
the way that they pass it around, the way that they hold it, the way that they take sips is just wrong. And all they need to do is fill it with some water. But they never do it. They never do it. Well, exactly. Put something in it. <laughs> like, give it, give it, give it real weight. Because you can eat, like, I can, well, maybe this is just me, but I can tell instantly when someone has an empty coffee cup by the way that they hold it. And, and, and I agree with you. Like, I'm not saying have them drink coffee for hours. Like, I'm just saying, like, they should do something that makes it seem like there's actually something in it. Sand actually makes sense to me because the issue with doing water or some other liquid is that you can actually drink it. Uh, and that seems problematic. Um, <laughs> yeah, like. So weird. Yeah, but like the thing about sand is, is um, you could easily put some tape on the inside of the top of the cup so that the sand wouldn't get out. Uh, it'd be easy enough. Like there's, I think of at least four ways to do it. <laughs> um, I think water would work well. The problem is, well, and maybe this is just me being way too detail oriented, but you would have to fill it up to the same line every single, every single shot, which would not be that fun, <laughs> but you know. No, because, like, they're, uh, uh, Wordwin's right, like, you, you might have to shoot a scene for, like, four or five hours, and even, like, four or five hours of, like, sips of coffee, just not great. Well, I was thinking the sand would be cool because uh, the sand would move a little bit better uh, inside the cup, but you could put it in like a plastic bag or something. Like you could you could put it in like a like a sandwich bag <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I agree I, I would I mean I haven't been on set in a while so I'd have to try out some stuff but it just it bugs me so much so much
And it's even worse in Korean dramas because they will literally go to another location, like a coffee shop, to have a two-minute conversation, and they'll have coffee cups that are empty for those two minutes. And it's like, why didn't you just have the conversation in the place you were at? You could have avoided the coffee cups entirely. <laughs> but yeah, it's all good, Eventua. Uh, I am going to be leaving in five minutes myself. Uh, I'm going to host uh, the Adobe channel because uh, Jonah Loeb is coming up and Jonah Loeb is a writer and artist and he's awesome. Uh, I met him in RL. He's a great guy. Um, <laughs> it would have to be very vibrantly green. You'd probably have to dye it or something. That'd be, that'd be weird. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's because every time they have, a, have to have a conversation, it has to be over basically a meal uh, or a drink. So they'll travel halfway across the city, like an hour, to have a two-minute conversation. It makes no sense to me, but apparently it's a thing. It happens all the time. That's not a good paragraph, whatever. Yes, she is singing. But he can't hear her because he's blocked his ears. All right, 501, perfect. All right, it is 2.59, uh, so I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, I'm actually gonna probably keep writing uh, I'm going to get some food and I'm going to keep writing. I'm not going to work on this though. I'm going to work on some of my own personal projects. Um, other than that, uh, I'm going to host Adobe and I will be back on tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and I'm going to work on the next scene. Uh, not this one, even though it's not finished. I'm going to work on the next scene. Uh, so yeah, three o'clock. It's been three hours. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, my name is Brendan, and this has been Accidental Origin, your weekly daily writing web show. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can check me out on Twitter uh, up there or on the web over there. There we go. Got it. Uh, and see previous and past episodes, VODs, uh, more information, uh, anything like that. So yeah, I will talk to you all later.